All around. Sometimes up, sometimes down, <laughs> but always around. <laughs> Pollution, are you coming to my town or am I coming to yours? <laughs> We're on different buses, Pollution. But we're both using petrol. <laughs> Bombs. <laughs> oh. Lads, it's two o'clock in the afternoon. <laughs> Maybe it's time we got up. <laughs> Lucky I didn't sleep through the alarm or we'd have missed half the day. <laughs> oh. Thanks for telling me about the new hole, guys. <laughs> you say you want a revolution. <laughs> Have you been using my Voulon deodorant? There's a revolting hair on it, and it's not one of mine. How do you know? Because I know what mine look like, Vivian. I can see them now. Not the ones on your bum, you can't. <laughs> off your bum. Oh, and I suppose you think that being rude first thing in the morning is a terribly trendy thing to do, do you, Vivian? <laughs> well, it's not. Look, look, it's probably a hamster hair. He was getting a bit whiffy, so I gave him a good going over. <laughs> and was I consulted, Pally? How does he think I feel, stinking like a student's armpit? <laughs> stealing, Vivian. It's common stealing. And if you ever touch it again, ever, I'm going to the police. I will, you know, I will go <laughs> to the police. <laughs> Why is it always me that makes the tea? It's as if the kettle's killed itself rather than be used by me. <laughs> hey, Rick. Time is money, right? I know standing on the landing may be a great song title. To me, it's just a tax loss. So make space for the face that falls the abortion issue. <laughs> Good morning, Michael. Morning. <laughs> it's incredible, isn't it, Mike, that... Well, that one goes to bed, apparently completely free of grit. <laughs> when you get up in the morning, your bed's always full of bits. That's <laughs> tough for me to comment, Viv. I can never see my matching undersheet for chicks. <laughs> yeah, I have the same problem with fleas. You see, <laughs> without my spectacles, fleas and bits are almost identical. <laughs> Not that a flea's going to be wearing my spectacles. Oh, nice one, Viv. <laughs> the act's really coming along. Thanks, mate. <laughs> Listen, Viv. If I wanted to stand around in corridors, I would have taken a train, OK? Uh, look, Mike, uh, good morning. Morning. Uh, I've, got, I've got a lecture today, and I think my appearance at it is going to be rather important. Rick, it's Saturday. Is it? Yeah. <laughs> the only lecture today is Mike's biology class, so make way for the doctor. I've got to scrub up. Yes, but Mike, look, I've, I've got the bathroom router here. Yeah, never mind about all that. Never mind. Come here, come here. <laughs> oh. 
how'd you get five elephants into a mini? I beg your pardon? You chop them in half, yes. and you chop them in half again, yes. and you slice them up very finely, and you mash them, and then you scoop them up into plastic bags, you put some in a boot, some on a back seat, and what's left over you put on the passenger seat. <laughs> If you'd wanted to talk about it, you should have said <laughs> you wanted to let off steam. <laughs> Kettle, let off steam. <laughs> oh, sorry. Good morning, Bill. Uh, tea ready yet, is it? Shh. The kettle's had a breakdown. Oh, no. Means we'll have to have raw tea again. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want to see a great new trick? Oh, yeah, yeah, all right, Viv, yeah, yeah, yeah. All you gotta do is stand over here, right? Stand over there, yeah. yeah. Uh, looking right. this way. Look that way, right? Oh, no, close your eyes, actually. Close your eyes, yeah. right. <clears throat> okay. You got them closed? Yeah, ready. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Nice one, I get it. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's what told that to me the other day. Uh, better get the lentils on, boy. I laughed and laughed and laughed. Yeah. <laughs> oh. uh, I don't think I'm gonna be able to make the breakfast without breaking all the plates, Viv. Why's that, Neil? Um, you see, the lentils are trapped behind this huge mound of teetering crockery. <laughs> what are we going to do? <laughs> I hope we get through to the back of the cupboard this time, Viv. <laughs> yeah, great, great. This one's it. Yeah. Right. And uh, Neil, Neil, the lentils are dripping out all over the stairs. <laughs> oh no, it's full. Uh, Viv, can you get rid of that semolina? Uh, no, it was the bowl I wanted. Um, I didn't know. Uh, get a bowl. Get, get a bowl. bowl. Yeah. Uh, Viv. Viv. Yeah. Uh, Really quickly, okay? <laughs> really quickly. <laughs> <laughs> This will never go round. They're <laughs> cornflakes. Cornflakes for breakfast? That's disgusting, Neil. <laughs> 27 minutes and 32 seconds in the bathroom and Mike looks fantastic. Unlike the kitchen, Neil. What is this mess? Oh, uh, well, it's mostly lentils, but there's some crockery mixed in. <laughs> uh, Mike, Mike. There's a cup of tea in the pot. Oh, oh, yeah. Oh, good one, Viv, yeah. <laughs> He's only improvising, but Shakespeare could have written a script. <laughs> That's not funny. I could do better than that. Oh, so you're an expert on comedy all of a sudden. Not all of a sudden. I just am. Well, it seems very strange that an expert on comedy should be advertising tents on the back of a cornflakes packet. <laughs> Look, I'm gay. What? Tent. Camp. Gay. Now, you've got to admit it, that was funny. <laughs> We should have time for a crap before we started. <laughs> See if girls ever think of. Will you shut up and keep smiling? We're supposed to be the ideal nuclear family. Post-nuclear, more like. <laughs> gotcha, Vivian! Using my ketchup on your cornflakes! <laughs> I couldn't get any milk out of the fridge! <laughs> Why, what are you? A spazzy? <laughs> no! <laughs> there just happens to be an atom bomb in front of the door! <laughs> Excuse me, <laughs> Gordon Walters! <laughs> <laughs> That's an atom bomb. Oh, no. <laughs> it's the Holocaust. <laughs> World War Three, Heavy! What are we going to do? Mike! Hey, hey, turn on the telly. Good thinking, Biff. We need information. <laughs> no, I wanted to watch Afternoon Plus. <laughs> Turn it over then. Might as well try the other oh, one. That's all right. <laughs> Absolutely pathetic. There's nothing on at all. <sighs> don't even know why we bothered to pay our license. <laughs> we don't. <laughs> but haven't we got a license? No. But that makes
makes me a criminal. <laughs> right on. <laughs> yeah, this will shake them up at the anarchist society. <laughs> Occupying the refectory. So what? <laughs> this is the real stuff. <laughs> I'm a fugitive. A desperado. <laughs> I'm going to form a new union society, right, with me as president. People who don't pay their TV licenses against the Nazis. <laughs> this is only the beginning. What are you going to do, Rick? Burn your bra? <laughs> well, someone's got to do it, Vivian. It's very easy to sit on your backside, isn't it? Not if you haven't got a bottom. <laughs> That'll be the front doorbell ringing. I bet I know who's got to answer it. <laughs> but Neil, you like meeting people. <laughs> If I had a penny for every time I had to answer the door, I'd have £5.63. <laughs> it's probably someone unbelievably boring. Oh, no! It's the TV detector man! <laughs> Why, you bastard! <laughs> Why didn't you buy a licence? I can't go to prison! I'm too busy! I'll get raped! Yes, yeah, steady on. <laughs> I'm not beaten yet. The time has come for diplomacy. Oh, no. The time for diplomacy is over. Here. Shut the telly out the window. Get him quickly! Quickly! <laughs> that I did not expect. <laughs> Why are we sneaking out past him into the street? Yes! 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 Mike! You run outside, right, and say, point to the sky and say, look at that interesting thing up there! You disguise the TV as an old woman and sneak it past him! Look, suicide may be a great hobby, but I wouldn't do it for a living. Lads! Lads! Look, I've told him we haven't got a telly, and I think that's thrown him a bit, but uh, it won't hold him forever. <laughs> that's good thinking, Neil. Keep it up. This is a very tricky spot, but Mike, the cool person, will squeeze it. Rick, stop crying. I'm not crying. I've just got something in my eye. That's right. <laughs> Eat the telly. <laughs> that's a completely brilliant idea, Mike. I've been waiting for this for a long time. <laughs> It was the other three, not me. <laughs> I had no idea what was going on. It really was the other three. <laughs> All right, don't rush me. I mean, that is not such an easy question to answer, you know. Have I got a telly? <laughs> there could be a number of, like, different replies, couldn't there? I mean, I need time to think one up. You know? We know you've got one. We detected it. Oh. <laughs> so you've just been playing with me all along? Well, it's better to play with yourself. Ho, oh, ho, a cheap sexual illusion makes the world go round. Uh, Neil, you haven't introduced me to your new pal. Bastard's the name. <laughs> but you can call me right bleeding. All my friends do. Well, did. How do you mean? I killed him. Where's your licence? <laughs> As the eunuch said to Mussolini, I haven't got one. And if I did, I wouldn't show it to you. It was a really cheap joke, bro. I'm saving up to pay the licence fine. You tell me you haven't got a plan. I can never resist a challenge. Neil, I haven't got a plan. I hope someone's taking this down. Right, where's this telly? <laughs> Aha! So you do have a... You little runt! <laughs> <laughs> the old trick, eh? Eat the telly before I get a chance to nick you. It's a toaster. <laughs> it's a telly, you yobbo. Give it back. I want to nick you. Oh, Mr. Bastard, Mr. Bastard. OK. Now, toaster or telly, the contents of my colleague's stomach are private property. And if they get damaged in any way, we sue. Well, I can wait. I've dealt with your sort before. <laughs> Where's your toilet? Oh, uh, upstairs. Just follow your nose. <laughs> well, that's right, Neil. Tell the fascists where our toilet is. <laughs> I'm going up there now to wait. I know how to wait. And I promise you, son, when that telly comes out the other end, <laughs> you're nicked. <laughs> <laughs> It's all right, lads. 
I always poo before I get up. <laughs> dear, oh dear, what a boring man. <laughs> oh, no, that was really heavy, Rick. Oh, what's this? It was the other three, not me. Give me that! <laughs> oh, that's very nice, isn't it? Trying to blame us three and save yourself. <laughs> it's all right, Mike, I'll tear it up. <laughs> Disgusting. <laughs> in this nutty place. <laughs> yeah, sometimes I really wish that I was a fly on the wall. I suppose that I would too if I wasn't one already. <laughs> Who are you? Uh, we're just the uh, fly on the wall documentary film crew, OK, love? Um, we just make a short film about what it's really like to be a fly on the wall. <laughs> so well, probably the best thing is if you can just uh, imagine we're not here, OK? Just right. carry on with your normal daily business, I all right? See. And Two question markers. What's it like being a fly on the wall? Ah, uh, uh, well, it's overrated. <laughs> I'll tell you something really dirty. Pesky little things. Why do you always let so many flies in this place, Neil? Never mind about that, Rick. Seriously, we ought to do something about this bomb. I'm going upstairs to get the incredibly helpful and informative Protect and Survive manual. <laughs> Nobody better touch this while I'm gone. <laughs> and I'm telling you to stop. Just ignore him, Mike. He's trying to show off. <laughs> I'll tell you something. If we took this baby to the greengrocers, we'd come away with more than a packet of tea. Are you suggesting that we make a puppet out of nuclear arms? Yes. Oh, I think that would be very fine behaviour for a Cliff Richard fan, wouldn't it? <laughs> for someone who actually thinks the lyrics of Devil Woman have got something to say. <laughs> Rick, if we sold this bomb, you could buy Cliff Richard. Will you stop it? <laughs> what I need is the drill, the hedge trimmers, and some ordinary household bleach. <laughs> well, I'm going to tell Thatcher that we've got a bomb, and that if she doesn't do something to help the kids by this afternoon, <laughs> we're going to blow up England. A social conscience is like a garden shed. You try and eat it, it will stick in your throat. <laughs> <laughs> Point one, abolish poverty. Point two, abolish capitalism. Point three, Dex's Midnight Runners playing free daily in the university library. Well, I told it to set up in our lavatory. <laughs> <laughs>
with our bomb. I tell you, this is going to be bigger than the biggest thing you could think of. <laughs> I notice you haven't written the call down in the book, Mike. <laughs> that's, that, that's very interesting, isn't it, really? You see, we've got this book here that we write down the calls that we make in. <laughs> I suppose you forgot, did you? Well, I wonder how many other times you conveniently forgot. Rick, what are you talking about? This is a payphone. <laughs> Principle of the thing, really. We're talking about. <laughs> what do you mean you haven't got the Libyan phone book? I pay my rental, don't I? You're sick, Mike. If people weren't sick, we wouldn't need penicillin. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to the phone book. <laughs> Neil, could you let me fuck? What are you doing? Oh, uh, painting myself white to deflect the blast. <laughs> discrimination even in death <laughs> what are these oh sandbags <laughs> come on give me five pence neil oh so you remember my name when it's time to borrow some money <laughs> give me it <laughs> have you got two twos and a one <laughs> uh no i haven't well, how do I know I'm going to get it back? I mean, I don't want to seem like a really heavy breadhead or anything. <laughs> you know, like... 5p is 5p. Look, Neil, it's important to me. That's enough. But you're putting me in a really difficult situation. <laughs> I'd like to lend it to you, Neil, but it's, it's like 5p. Oh, I shut up, Neil. Shut up. Shut up. <laughs> Will you lend it to me if I promise to be a slave all day tomorrow? <laughs> Yeah, that sounds like a good deal, yeah. <laughs> Tough luck, Buster! <laughs> I have my fingers crossed behind my back all along. I won't say anything, cos no-one ever listens to me anyway. <laughs> it might as well be a Leonard Cohen record. <laughs> so you're sending someone round straight away? Right. All right. Red T. Balotsky. All right, me old trout and toolbox. How you doing? Hey, up. <laughs> Here's me card. Reggie Balotsky, international arms dealer, scrap metal merchant and French cabaret chanteuse. <laughs> is, uh, is that the atom bomb then, is it, eh? Ooh, nah. <laughs> Not in that colour, you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> See, that bomb, to me, it's worth, well, a pony, you know. A couple of tortoises at the most, you know? <laughs> no, I mean, if you... If you was doing part X on a mini metro, you know what I mean, right? <laughs> well, I'd take about nine million off your hands, but um, <laughs> as it is, you know what I mean? So I can't help you, really. Still, I've got a few minutes. I might as well indulge in a bit of Cockney Patois, you know what I mean? <laughs> Go on, blimey, knock it on the head. Do what, as it happens. <laughs> <laughs> Terrific, yeah. Here, didn't you kill my brother? 
No, it must have been me then. Sorry, anyway. <laughs> you seen them new inflatable bridges? Cool, they're amazing, aren't they? Hey, bloody hell. <laughs> Skateboards, finger the pals. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Do leave off, knock it on the head. I don't know who I am. <laughs> laugh, laugh, I nearly went to Ethiopia. <laughs> <laughs> Second class, of course. <laughs> you know what I mean? Not really, no, Richard. <laughs> <laughs> You're a right little five-speed gearbox, aren't you? <laughs> yeah, I'll tell you what, right? Tell you what, come outside, I'll do your part X on a Reliant, right? <laughs> Reliant, eh? I'll just get me coat. Yeah. Reliant? That's a three-wheeler, isn't it? Usually, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hi there. Glad you could make it. I'll be with you in just one moment. <laughs> oh, darn. You should have been here earlier. I hold and won. Mind you, I was playing pinball in the clubhouse. <laughs> you see where my ball went? Oh, oh. Here comes trouble. <laughs> Chinese food, huh? <laughs> Dicky! <laughs> seen this guy since for a rehearsal. He did not. I didn't know you'd taken up golf. My coach says I haven't. Yet. Hey, you got a coach? Frank, pull me out, huh? <laughs> oh, come on, Dicky. Are we gonna play golf or who? Hey, Zieg Heil. Hey, Marsha, take a hike. I gotta tell you this, Dickie. Yeah. I was with Bob and Frank the other day. I got a birdie on the 14th. Why, why Dino, that's that's terrific. Yeah. But I was driving for the 10th. You remember that song he used to sing before he got shot in the neck? <laughs> you wanna sing that song right here on my show? Hey, why Dino, I, I'd love to, but hey, I never sing in slacks. No problem. <laughs> For the little Dino magic. Hey, Dino, I understand that you have a dog. That is right. Tell me, Dino, what are you doing with this dog these days? I'm tying my dog to the railroad track. Uh-huh. Choo-choo train's gonna break his back. We used to call him Spot. Yeah, hell, but now he's called Splat. <laughs> That's the kind of person we are. Oh, baby, won't you come home with me? <laughs> This place seems to get worse and worse, don't you think? Aye, lad, you're right. Things certainly were different before these newfangled changes. Well, of course they were, you senile old ghetto. They wouldn't be changing, <laughs> would they? Oh, I, I was only agreeing. Oh, yes, I suppose things were pretty marvellous in the good old days, weren't they? Yeah. Four-year-old kiddies digging coal. Well. Three-year-old kiddies... <laughs> Uh, digging coal as well as the four-year-old kid. I suppose you think that was done, <laughs> don't you? Well, I've got news for you. I think old people are really boring. And the only reason you don't understand our music is that you don't like it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it, it's no wonder the country is in such a state. I don't know why they don't just be honest and have the whole place over to Oxfam. 
Nothing but, but scroungers and horrid old people who work shy layabouts, all wandering around, clutching their gyros, trying to get something for nothing. Oh, yes, the post office seems to be very good at handing out other people's money, doesn't it? No wonder my grant's so small. I suppose the next thing will be rows and rows of little biafran children, all queuing up for a bowl full of millet before they become communists. Excuse me, I think I was first. Hello. Can I help you? That depends what I want, doesn't it? <laughs> Completely over her head, of course. I want to send a telegram. Good. Well, if you'd just like to fill in this form, right. I can serve the gentleman behind you. Can I help you, dear? Wait, wait a minute, wait a minute. He's behind me. Yes, but you... I had to wait. Why can't he? <laughs> I took the hand that Look, just That's don't... Fine. I need to wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> very long. <laughs> Better. <coughs> We've got a bomb. <coughs> do... God, do you mind? I'm trying to write. Do what we want, or we'll blow it up. Signed, Anon. <laughs> right there, see? Didn't take very long, did it? You put my name and address on it. Rick, 15 Credibility Street. <laughs> that, that's, that's Rick. Rick. Oh, forget it. Put Neil. <laughs> yes, put Neil. It's, uh, it's my surname. Yeah. OK, Mr Neil, thanks. By the way, you have come to the wrong place. This is the DHSS. If you want to send a telegram, you should go to the post office. Fascist! <laughs> OK, Neil. Where's the table? <laughs> oh, hi, Mike. Uh, you got the provisions. Great, great. Uh, you know, John Lennon once said, a man with an arm full of takeaways is either very hungry or knows someone who's very hungry. <laughs> yeah. Mike says a man with both arms full of takeaways has got warm grease running up both sleeves. <laughs> now, I've been trying to sell our bomb to all the main undercover agents in town. Now, the CIA are interested, the Mafia's interested, and the Chinese are falling over themselves. Oh, no, no, not on the roof, man. <laughs> Put it in the food zone. <laughs> Anyway, it's got to be tinned if it's going to last ten years of fallout. No, Neil, no, you don't understand. <laughs> I'm expecting that phone to start ringing and the world to start bidding any second now. Well, well they better hurry up, because Vivian's escaped. <laughs> <laughs> Missed! Tomorrow, everyone in England will be free and there's going to be no more social prejudice or hatred. <laughs> Get up, Neil, I hate you. <laughs> That's done anyway, done anyway, done what? Yeah, done what, hippie? Yeah. <laughs> Told Thatcher about our bomb, you bunch of lavatory bulls. <laughs> Rick, I'm dealing with the bomb. You? Ha! You hypocritical Nazi. Oh, shut up. Oh, shut up yourself. Oh, <laughs> What are we going to do, Mike? Mike, the cool person stays steady as a rock while all around him is chaos. He checks his reflection. That's good. <laughs> it's very good. <laughs> That's the only way to go. I hope this isn't a dud. <laughs> I know! Dreep Neil over it! It might sort of cover up the blast! <laughs> uh, there's no time. Quick, under the shelter! Yes! <laughs> <laughs> I've got a gun and I'm not afraid to use it. <laughs> 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 